All right, well, I've got a couple fun little stories. Uh, as you may or may not know, today is an Escape at All Hood High Holiday. Uh, it is Paper Airplane Day. And yes, so I scoured the internet for news. At about first, I thought that all these pictures were cheese. Isn't that funny? It's a little bit like cheese, doesn't <laughs> it? Like, it's cheese? It's not. Are we talking it's about not. cheese? It's paper. So okay. right. this story, I got I to gotta admit, this is from like five years ago, but I just thought it was kind of a neat little breaking. thing. Breaking. Breaking. Yes, breaking, <laughs> breaking story here, top of the top of the uh, it's stack. It's like the news cycle. It just keeps you rotating, so yeah. we're good to go yeah. five years later. So uh, Harry Everett Smith was a painter, filmmaker, and collector, uh, but he considered himself an anthropologist. Smith, who died in 1999, 1991, was, according to his friends, always collecting things. He had an, a paper airplane collection, which was one of the oddest of his many odd collections. This is from a story in the New Yorker that I found. Most of the paper airplanes were found in the streets and buildings of New York. Smith was always, always, always looking for new airplanes, one friend said. He would run out in front of the cabs to get them, you know, before they got ran over. I remember one time we uh, he saw one in the air and he was just running everywhere, trying to figure out where it was going to be. It was just like out of his mind. He was out of his mind completely. He couldn't believe he'd seen one. Someone, I guess, shot it from an upstairs building. Uh, they said it's not clear how many airplanes he collected in total. He would flatten them for storage and friends recall seeing boxes and boxes of them. Like, which I can't imagine just seeing. Right. I, I don't That's know if I've part ever of the story. I was seen like, am I misunderstanding this? He's not throwing airplane. them. He's finding He's them? He's finding them in the Maybe streets Maybe in New York. York City that happens way more often. That I, would not happen. <laughs> well, I almost wonder right? if it's like you and your hearts in nature. Oh, maybe. Because I almost never see hearts in nature, and hmm. you're seeing them left and right. So maybe it's like that whole thing of what you're looking for is what you will find and what you will see. And that's a, that's a huge Profound, thing. Right? Um, so he called his planes samples. The samples um, are, were delightfully varied. He had, um, he had tons of these things. And it was cool. Like they had different paper, different... Uh, patterns on them. Um, he loved oh, best yeah. the variety of the constructions. Hmm. Uh, he observed that there were trends in the design. So he did this over decades. Okay. So Martha's saying this. Who has ever found a random paper airplane? Me Not neither. Me, me no. neither. No. I don't get this. Um, amazing. <laughs> uh, the story. He said he would notice the trends in the designs, ways of folding that would become prevalent and then disappear, hmm. only to have a resurgence years later. An airplane could also be a manifestation of its creator's past. In addition to finding planes in the street, Smith would ask friends and visitors to show him how they used to make paper airplanes when they were children. Hmm. Uh, many of the airplanes have writing on them, noting the location of where they were found. Uh, so I think just wow. pretty cool to have a paper airplane collection. Well, like sweet. Jennifer Tackett here says at the end, can you imagine opening boxes and finding these inside? Like the people, I know, right? Just how many of them? Yeah, yeah. Wow. I, I guess he donated a bunch of them to the Smithsonian. Okay. And then they donated them somewhere huh. and it got made into a, a book. So that's where some of these pictures are from, was from a book that came out a couple years ago. I mean, ago. This, the, sam the sampling of six right here is just kind of fascinating just to look at. It is. It's pretty the cool. Different styles, what different vibes. What year did this guy do all this? Like he died in 99? Like, I, th I want to say like the 60s through the 80s or okay. something like that. Huh. He died in 91. So. I was just trying to figure out if there was any reason why those decades would have had more paper airplanes, you know? I don't know. I don't know. It's this interesting. This is really fascinating. So um, then I have another one that's a little bit more uh, recent, like just a few weeks old. Okay. Uh, so this is a, a good pandemic story. This comes from CTV News in Ottawa, or as they say, Ottawa. 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 Canada. Our neighbors up north. In the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic last summer, one of Marcus Brun's friends challenged him to make a paper airplane. The first ones I started making were the ones you fold in half and half. The basic ones, said the seven-year-old. In October, Marcus started to watch YouTube videos on how to make designs that are more complicated. Aww. His curiosity quickly turned into a passion, sometimes folding planes for up to eight hours a day. Oh. That's when I realized <laughs> that what I thought was this quick diversion turned out to be much more, says his mom, yes. Laura. He came to me and said, my hands are sore. I have blisters. Oh. Oh. 
So he proudly says he knows how to fold 40 different designs of planes, and he does all of them with a simple motto, no glue, no scissors, no tape. His family and friends quickly noticed his skill. And then this is kind of cool. Uh, all of these planes are the creation and design of the paper airplane guy, John Collins. Collins is the world record holder for paper airplane distance. His tutorials were the ones Marcus was watching in the early days of learning how to fold more complex designs. And then Marcus asked his parents for Collins's latest book. And get this, uh, her mom, his mom said, we found the book and ordered it. But as I was doing that, it also said you could have a tutorial with John Collins. And I thought, well, he's seven. How will that go? <laughs> and uh, Con they, this reporter reached out to Collins and he said, I remember it quite well. Uh, Collins is from California. He says, the folding was very, very crisp and accurate. And quite a few of them looked like I had folded them myself, oh my which is pretty rare to see someone seven years old who can fold like that, recalls hmm. Collins. It was incredible. Marcus's response when asked about breaking Collins' world record, John Collins said, I will. Colin agrees. Aww. There's no question he has the folding chops to break my record or any record that he wants to pursue. So the little boy's name is Colin. No, the little boy's oh. name is Marcus. Marcus. Okay. John Collins. John Collins is the okay. paper airplane guy. This kid. Oh my gosh, you guys. Marcus, we gosh. salute you. That is uh, that is pretty rad. He wow. said uh, when uh, elsewhere in the article, it said he threw one of them at school. The kids uh, would want paper airplanes folded and one went over the roof he said oh, so they were all legit. excited about that it was pretty pretty rad <laughs> it didn't land on the roof it literally went over the roof yeah oh yeah. my goodness wow and, uh, yeah Marcus. then he i guess he donated a bunch to like other kids oh. or something and so it's a heartwarming cool. story it's totally like a, a a classic example of kids and passions and when you get out of their way right it yes. doesn't sound like the mom was like Forcing him to do this for yes. like fine motor for skills for the blisters, I know, yeah. or like engineering and STEM. I mean, I am a former educator, so don't. Get, I'm not making fun of educators. It's more just what we do to, to kids by making sure it has a purpose, right? Yeah. Kids have to have a purpose to their work, which is completely false. As you can see, I'm very passionate about. This. Well, I, I, it's, <laughs> I would argue that there is a purpose to right. his work, but exactly. we just don't have to, it uh, have to be defined know by exactly adult. what it is right. or, yeah, uh, we put an uh, emphasis on it. Right. I like Amy says, less screen time, right. more paper airplanes. I know. And, and Miss uh, Amy, congratulations to you. Ooh, newly yes, little... newly engaged. How exciting. Paper hats off to you, Marcus, says Jennifer. Paper hats off. Uh, <laughs> that's his next thing, is a paper hat, right? Yeah. And uh, Martha points out that's a paper airplane waiting to be found over the school roof and oh, off on an adventure. Right? Oh. To be collected in someone's paper airplane collection, perhaps. Right. This kid is inspiring. That's pretty, awesome. Pretty Maybe sweet. we should interview him Oops. on our show. That would be pretty would cool. That, be that, awesome? would be, that would be pretty cool. We should we should ask him to. Uh, it might be past his bedtime, his... depending on his uh, time zone. Yes. So we'll have to figure that out. <laughs> okay, we're gonna we're gonna try something a little bit different here today. Oh, we'll man. see if it'll work. All right. Well, that's oh, a good start right that there. That's a good start. Uh, we've got get this out of the way. I have a paper, piece of paper, Ooh. and uh, I've been practicing my paper airplane skills so uh anyone Sweet. who wants to play around with us get out a sheet of paper mm -hmm. and um i will give you a quick demonstration this is a fairly common design does it have to be called, square because yours looks well square. i cut yes i did cut mine off a little bit to be a little bit more uniform okay it does not need to be square okay right. it can be uh it doesn't need to be. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can do this under pressure. All right. <laughs> so basically what you want to do is you want to fold it down the middle like so. You could be a hand model. <laughs> like George Costanza. George Costanza. I don't know about that. <laughs> we just watched uh, that one the other night. <laughs> okay. And then fold it back. So you've got this line here, this crease. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pull this over and use that crease as a guideline. And then fold in a little uh, the nose of your plane. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do it to the other side. Look pretty good so far. Mm -hmm. And you're done. No. <laughs> Look at, does anyone see a sneak peek from last week's um, Let's Draw? <laughs> His cheat rock there. Seat. Your cheat sheet. Yep. Yeah. All right. Then we're going to take, we're going to fold it again down the middle again, keeping this as a point. Okay. All right. 
like that. And again, we're going to do the same thing on this side. So we got this coming together here. Okay. I don't You're know. So crisp. If, I don't know if I'm doing them crisp enough for Mr. Collins or yeah. for Marcus, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Uh, then what you do is you fold it. Okay, see what I'm doing here? I'm going to fold it to this side and then fold it in half like this down that middle crease. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jen, Jennifer Tackett said, not a rule drawing on your desk table. I love That's it. Right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And then. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to fold this this wing down. I'm not really sure. Like something like this, I think will work. Helen says that your folds could be a little crisper. Thank you, Helen. I appreciate <laughs> the encouragement. <laughs> okay, and then we'll flip it over, and we're going to do the same side on this side. I love it when side. people razz you. Is yeah. that terrible that I love that, Helen? I'm shocked. Thank okay. you. All right, so we've got our airplane here. You can see it's it's. Uh, like this. Now, one of the tips that I read about was to make little wings, mm. uh, wing tips. I've you know, seen those. I didn't know. What on you, each side. Can you explain this, the aerodynamics? Apparently, this Six. helps it fly straighter and not um, do, you know, nose dives. Okay, which is um, quite prevalent. Probably, I want to make sure it's actually, you know, uniform. But this said, you can you can adjust it. So you can adjust the. Um, you know, the angle on these and things like that. Now, what you can do, and Mar I don't have this with me, but Marcus would be against this. Oh. But I read that you can then tape. Oh. See how this comes see, apart do like down the here? Taping. If yes. you tape this here, yeah. I think that actually makes it a little bit better. So you've got this. Um, Why would Marcus be against that if it would make it better? Uh, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the purity maybe of. A, like the simplicity him. of just the paper, maybe. So there you go. Oh, so Helen says, correct. It makes it balanced and more aerodynamic. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Helen. Interesting. All right. So how are we going to show them how this flies? We're going to throw it right <laughs> at you. You watching Catch right it. now. Get your hands ready. Get your hands up. I'm going to throw it right at Get you. Get it ready. Oh, hey, that was pretty good. Good catch. We broke our camera. Good catch. Good catch. <laughs> uh, so that will that, that worked awesome. out. I don't know if we'll ever use that camera that again. If but, you um, colored it symmetrical, would it fly straighter? If you colored it so symmetrical? Yeah, like if you made the design on the right side the same as the design on the left side, would it? Colored? like Yeah, like with markers. I don't know why that would have any difference <laughs> whatsoever, but uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, Just so curious. a little fun fact there is that this table, there are four of these. Oh. They're all custom made tables that uh, my dad and I made together. Yes. And, um, they're Paul. in our house I think we somewhere. Hit Paul in the face. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, Paul. Paul. Those, oh. <laughs> air, the, <laughs> those airplanes, they really they really can come at you, so be careful. Look at <laughs> Helen, apparently Helen is the paper airplane <laughs> expert. She said the uh, <laughs> the reason I'm guessing this is the reason he wouldn't use tape is because you can use the paper to interlock itself and tape adds uh, drag. Interesting. So that's a, that makes sense. Thank you for I love that. Your profile picture, by the way, Helen. That is so great with your little friend there. Mm, awesome. Here's another little tip from Beth. Small paper mm. clip on the nose of the plane helps with flight. Interesting. There you go. See? There you go. All I kinds feel... of paper airplane uh, uh, details <laughs> and tips.